This is the Pooja and Gurdeep Show. From 98.1 CHFI Studios in Toronto, Canada. Hey Toronto, this is Ed Sheeran. This is Kelly Clarkson. Hi, this is Brian Adams. This is Adele. This is Madonna. It's Michael Bublé. And you're listening to the Pooja and Gurdeep Show. It's fun. They're amazing. Okay, so we're all wondering... You were off yesterday. You were dropping Sia and Bodhi at school, at preschool for the very first time. They're two years old. How did it go? Oh, how did it go? I mean, they're fine. I'm not. Uh, I think I was more emotional than they were, but there okay. was a lot of hype in the lead up to the first day of school and preparing them for it. So You, you had a prediction, by the way. You had told me that you thought Sia was going to be fine. Your mm-hmm. daughter, who's older than Bodhi, and you thought Bodhi would be the one who was not okay. Yeah, he's he's a little more clingy than she is. Okay. We got there. Sia went right to her teacher. They had a meet and greet, so they already met their teachers. Went right to her teacher. Her teacher picked her up, and then she lay her head on her teacher's shoulder. Oh, that's She's nice. really sweet, but it just kind of gave me the sign that she was a little bit scared, and so oh, she needed some comfort. Okay. But she went very easily. That was good. Bodhi, on the other hand, looked around and saw what was going on. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Nobody said anything about you guys leaving me here and being away from my sister. Uh, He wouldn't let go of Paul's hand. He went into tantrum, meltdown, screaming in the foyer in front of everyone. Oh, boy. Uh, Teacher just picked him up, took him off. Was he dropping a lot of swear words? or No, no. Just me. Just you. That hasn't caught on, thankfully. Um, But, yeah, he was crying, and, I, you know, he had the hand out, like, Mama, that hand. He's so dramatic. Where could he have gotten that from? I have no idea. (laughs) Um, And so I was like, okay. And then we we had to get out quickly because, you know, you don't want to linger. Right. And as I was getting out, the principal's like, there's a tissue box in the office if you need one because she could see that I was starting to tear up a little bit but, but that's got that they've got to be so used to that right like this is what they do on mm-hmm. the first day like i'm sure c and Bodie were not the only kids that no. were having a meltdown no in fact when i went for pickup i went to go get uh, c and Bodie, and i was watching them just before they actually saw me and they were oh, so you're happy like lurking in the bushes outside the school you yeah. can get arrested for that son. <laughs> it was a little weird I'm, yeah. I'm new to this i didn't know you couldn't do that <laughs> um but i i saw them and they were playing and they were happy that oh, good. as soon as sia saw me she started crying. No. Yes. I'm like, see ya. I thought you were fine. He was great. He was like, oh, this is cool. It's good. So in the end, he cried on the drop off. She cried on the pickup. And we're driving home. And, you know, I'm like, tell me about school. What was your favorite part? And Sia says to me, no more school. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, no more school for today, but you do have to go back tomorrow. Education done after one day. That was a good run. <laughs> From CHFI Studios, it's the Pooja and Gurdip Podcast. Nobody likes doing chores, right? And maybe you even convince yourself that you, there's a way around it. You can avoid doing certain chores or maybe you put it off. I mean, some chores are good. Well, I know you personally love doing laundry. I, I love laundry like you love love. Okay. <laughs> well, Channing Tatum hates laundry. Wait, hold on. He specifically hates laundry? He, that's his like worst chore. He hates it so much that in a recent interview, this is what he was quoted as saying, the year of the fresh white tee. I don't think I did laundry all year that year. I just wore white t-shirts that I just bought. I'd look at it and be like, I can get two wears out of this a week. This is going to be good. The year of the fresh white tee, 99, 2000. It's a beautiful year. Hold on a second. So he, there's a lot to unpack here. Yes. He just wore white tees once or twice, and then what? Like Hulk Hogan them? Like it, like ripped them off? His, like what? He didn't wash <laughs> Hulk them. Hulk Hogan them? Yeah, if you watch wrestling, you know. I know. Uh, just didn't wash them. <laughs> so what? They just gone? Yeah, threw them out. What a waste! First of all, but, complete waste. And I guess you can afford it, Channing. Yeah. Well, also, if if he hates laundry that much, you're Channing Tatum. Like, just hire someone to do your laundry. Yeah. Why waste a shirt after two airs? And I'm sorry, but. If you're not doing laundry with your shirt, does that mean you're also not doing laundry for your bottoms? It raises a whole <laughs> host of questions. Because you still got to do laundry. Is it two wear or one or two wear for everything? Yeah. Is he hull coconing his skivvies? And is that is this really just an excuse because he was rehearsing? This was his all in the lead up to Magic Mike. He had to just practice he, ripping the tea off. So no, he was like, I got to throw these out anyway. No, I haven't seen that particular piece of American cinematic history, but... <laughs> oh, you have it? No, I haven't. I had to watch it for research pur- purposes sh- only. Sure you did. Mm. Yeah, sure you subjected your husband to it too. Um, <laughs> I don't know about this one, Channing Tatum. I don't I don't like this. Okay, I have a really quick question. Yeah. Have you ever tried doing this? Have you ever like cut a little slit at the top of a shirt and then try to rip it off? Have I Hulk hogan a shirt? Yes. I have. Ah! But only if it was like this shirt was fit for the pit. This shirt was like, okay, this is this is garbo. This shirt has holes in it. Like I mean, this is going away anyways. 
check both shoulders. No one's around. I'm going to do it. Did you do it in front of a mirror? Oh, yeah. (laughs) And then the first couple tries didn't work. So then I had to get scissors to give myself like a little little runway. Oh, no. And then it worked. And then you feel amazing. You're like, somebody get me some tearaways so I can keep on going. (laughs) It's all tearaway outfit. (laughs) This is the Pooja and Gurdjieff Podcast. New school year underway, and it is day three of the new cell phone ban in Ontario schools. We want to know how you think this is going so far. Is it working? Is it not? Teachers, parents, students, we want to hear from you. Just to set the table here, in terms of what this new ruling is, in case you're not familiar with it, basically junior kindergarten to grade six, Mm -hmm. no cell phones at all during the school day. Makes sense. They're pretty young. If you're grade seven to grade 12, it's no phones in class Unless the teacher or the educator makes some type of exception. So you can have it at lunch or in between classes, but not in class. Mm -hmm. And this is, I mean, this raises a whole bunch of questions and whether or not it is actually working. It puts a lot of pressure on teachers. My sister's a high school teacher. um, So I know this is a tough one. It's, It's tough to navigate. As a parent, I like that the schools are actually doing something about this. And that way, my kid isn't the only kid that doesn't have their cell phone. Because I'd love to be able to say to my kid, you can't use yours, but right. if everybody else is doing it, it's very hard to do. So I like that everybody's on board. Mm-hmm. This is also happening in the U.S. Yep. I think that's important, but you give kids rules, guess what? They're going to find a way to break them. Absolutely. And we should say this is all in the name of the thinking behind this is it's to try and reduce distractions in class. Because let's be honest, as adults, it's hard for us to manage our cell phone time. Imagine when you're that developing young mind. Of course, it's tough to regulate your, your screen time. Sorry, I missed what you were saying. I was just looking at my phone. <laughs> Great. <Yeah>. That's wonderful. <laughs> but I've heard from teachers as well. that are like, listen, if we have to, and if the rule is if a kid is like on their phone when they shouldn't be, the teacher is supposed to confiscate it, put it in a safe spot or whatever. But that's a lot. Like these phones are like fifteen hundred bucks. Like yeah. as a teacher, do you really want to be in charge of expensive technology that you know belongs to a student? They can also send the kid to the principal's office where they can turn their phone in and they come back to class. But then you're dealing with a probably a disenfranchised student. Mm-hmm. Are they going to be disruptive? It's just I just think I, I like that they're trying to do something. I just think the real solution is probably a much tougher answer that no one's addressing, which is I think you got to help these think these kids think critically about apps that apps and cell phone usage that's positive and that's manageable versus you know what do certain social media apps do to your brain what's the responsible way to use this should be curriculum in school and i know that's probably going to take a generation to bear fruit Mm -hmm. and it's the harder approach but isn't the best way to get the kids to think critically about what they're actually consuming plus you got to give some kudos to the kid who figures out how to hack the system and somehow you know has figured out the wi-fi workaround has figured out a way to send text anyway like you know there's going to be that kid who's like a future you know, tech whiz. That's the new most popular kid in school. It used to be the kid who would cut you a fake ID, and now it's the kid who can hack the Wi-Fi and get you access to your phone. The Pooja and Gurdy Podcast. From 98.1 CHFI. The Pooja and Gurdy Podcast. It's day three of the school year, and uh, the cell phone ban is a big talker. So basically, if you're in JK to grade six, no cell phones at all during the school day. Grade seven to grade 12, it's no phones in class unless the teacher or educator permits you to have it. And we want to know how it's going. We're calling on teachers, parents, students. You have a lot to say about this uh, on our text line at 981 getting a lot of calls as well. Let's uh, first head to a teacher in Newmarket. So what do you think about the ban? Um, actually, it's really no different than the rule before. It was always an unwritten rule. Um, each school had like their own unwritten rule. But, um, you know, Lecce had to come forward and make that sort of his rule. But it's always been a rule. So it's really in, our, in my school, there's absolutely no change whatsoever. Okay. And has it been effective with, with kids? Are they, are they listening? Is this something you have to constantly police? Um, no, not really. They're pretty respectful. A lot of kids are respectful. They put their phone away when, you know, I'm teaching. And uh, if there's independent work time and they want to bring it out and listen to music, I got no problem with that. Okay. There you go. Happy to hear a positive take. Um, Thanks so much for sharing that. Okay, no problem. Have Have a great day. You too. As I mentioned, a lot of texts to 981981, including this one. I work in a high school. So far, it's been pretty quiet surrounding the cell phone rules. I've polled some students, and they say their biggest hurdle is their annoyed parents who have left multiple texts, and they don't respond until lunch. Hmm. I've already noticed students at lunch with no phones. Their reason, no data. Why bother? Ah, so, I see. Okay. Interesting. I yeah. mean, so in this case, it's the parents who are actually sending the texts, like, 
leave the kids alone. Totally. I mean, unless it's an emergency, of course. I, I agree with boundaries. I also want to say I do sympathize with the students as well because, like, imagine we were told as adults, hey, you can't have your phone for the day or whatever. We would struggle with that as fully formed, well, borderline fully formed adults, <laughs> right? So tough for the students who are used to having their phones all summer. Uh, we wanted to hear from students. We've got a student, Ashlyn from Waterdown, who is in grade seven. How's this all going for you so far, the cell phone uh, ban? Honestly, it's not much trouble for me, but we have kind of these lockbox locker things, and they're right in our classroom, so it's kind of tempting for other students to steal them at break. You, you guys all have to put your cell phones in a lockbox when class starts. Yeah, and then the teacher locks them up. And has there been any that have been stolen? Uh, no, not really. Okay. okay. And is it, is, can you, like, see the lockbox when you're sitting in class, or is it out of sight? Uh, it's, like, right on the ledge. Okay, so that might be a little distracting, the fact that it's there. Do you think this is going to work for the whole school year? Honestly, I don't think the lock the lockbox is going to work. There's been a few students that are like, oh, I don't have a phone. And I'm just keeping it in their locker. But, See, this oh, is the yeah. whole thing about breaking the rules, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, listen, Ashlyn, thank you so much for taking the time to call us. We appreciate it. It's nice to hear a student's perspective. You have an awesome day at school, okay? Okay, thank awesome. you. All right, so how is the cell phone ban going in schools? We want to hear from you. Let's go to Tammy in Little Britain. What do you think? I think that, uh, you know what, we've lost control. Like, I don't see why we can't put limits on things and why we can't say no to our young people. Mm. I think it starts at home. And uh, we, right from the very get-go, we have to start setting limits. Yep. Yeah, the, I mean, Pooja made a great point earlier saying, like, it works in theory, but then it's sort of it's sort of like every parent has to do that then, right? Because if you have one kid in school who has access to a cell phone and one who doesn't, the kid who doesn't feels maybe, like, left out. Yeah. No, that's true. And I do think it needs to start, it needs to start right from the very beginning of school, and it needs to be taught that there's limits of what you can do where you are. Yeah. And I think now that, you know, we are all so much more aware of the negative impacts, you know, kids being on their smartphones can have, whether it's the algorithms, the apps, whatever it might be, I think collectively there is concern. It's just that we all have to sort of be working together, and that is often easier said than done. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But it does start at home. It's like I limit the cell phone use uh, during dinner time, during certain hours, and you know what? It's hard sometimes, but I have to stick to it. Yeah. Tammy, how old are your kids? My kids are all grown, so I have grandchildren now. So, but it goes for them when they right. come for uh, Sunday dinner. Mm-hmm. There's no cell phones at dinner, and with my grandchildren, I really limit how much they can be on their phones when they're with me. A grandparent nice. with rules. I like that. Yeah. Because all those rules went out the window for my nephews when they were at my parents' place. <laughs> uh, Tammy, it's uh, great to hear from you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Have, have a, a great, great day. day. You too. Have a nice day. <laughs> an aggressive have a nice day. Yeah, have a nice day because it's Motorist Consideration Monday. So this is the day where you're in your car, you're going to do all the thank yous, you're going to signal, you're going to... Let people in. Let people in. You're going to breathe, uh-huh. right? We're going to remind ourselves that this time next week, right, we're going to start to see kids going back to school. Yes. We all need to slow down a little bit, park the anger... This is the day. I feel like this is easier said than done. The optimist in me wants to believe this is doable. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know, man. People are angry in the roads these days. I saw a little bit of it this weekend. Um, I use a couple of tricks. Some, okay. Some, some breath work. Yep. Some deep breaths. Mm-hmm. Take a couple of deep breaths before you react. And also, for me, if I'm starting to get frustrated in the car, someone does something, I just pop this on. I have this ready to fire up on my Spotify constantly. And yeah? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Tell me this doesn't relax you. It actually is very relaxing. But now I'm just getting a visual of you driving with your eyes closed, which is also dangerous. <laughs> so no, don't no, recommend that. That's Ed Sheeran. Oh, okay. So that's your Serenity song. Yeah, do huh? you have an Enya type song to calm you down? I do. Um, this is mine. I'm what? Sexy for my shirt. You're doing your runaway walk, right? Okay, how are you going to be in a bad mood? You roll down your windows, this song's playing, right? Like, even you're on the gardener in all of that traffic, and you're like, I'm too sexy for the gardener, too sexy for the gardener, too sexy for the DVP and all the things, right? Okay. Yeah, right, said Pooch. Yeah. (laughs) 
If you say it like that, though, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like feel you genuine. really want them yeah, to have no. a nice day. Have a nice day. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Pooja and Gurdip podcast. Listen to Pooja and Gurdip live weekday mornings from 5 to 9. Only on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's perfect music mix.